When you become an award-winning web series that has left a massive impact on the internet, all made possible thanks to a single franchise, chances are the creators of the original are bound to take notice. Fortunately, Bungie didn't sue them or tell them to stop using their game. Instead, the company was incredibly supportive of Rooster Teeth early on and chose to acknowledge them in only the best way they can, Easter eggs. Over the years, various Rooster Teeth and Red vs. Blue references have snuck their way into each of the core main titles. Well, except for one. And today I'm going to be going through each of them, so just in case you happen to stumble by one of these areas, you know what to keep a lookout for. I suppose we should start this off with one of the most popular references that even casuals would recognize its name as it's become one of the most played game modes outside of the traditional Slayer matches, and that's Griff Ball. Originally made as an off-handed joke by Sarge in Season 4, the concept of what Griff Ball would be and why Sarge would take so much enjoyment from it was an idea that lingered in the writer's mind. But it wasn't until RT was asked to make a promotion for Halo 3's heroic map pack that the idea actually became a reality. The focus of the video was to showcase Forge and all of the new items that are available to create your own maps and custom game modes. Simmons, for example, created a rail cannon to launch things at Griff, and Caboose builds a new reality. You know, Caboose things. But originally planned in the video was a game created by Griff designed to be the laziest game type possible, in which the player would pick up a flag, walk two feet, and score. The idea was cut due to it not being as funny enough to be in the final product, but the fact that the court had already been created, this is the base for what inevitably inspired Griff Ball. Of course, it didn't just come to fruition all of a sudden. The game mode was originally called Halo Rugby, and all of the rules and fluidity of everything was as scuffed as you could imagine a rough draft of a game mode could be. But over time, the mode was retitled to Griff Ball. The ball carrier turns orange to represent Griff, and in all scenarios, Sarge gets to take enjoyment from Griff's pain. Everyone on the field is trying to kill him, and even upon scoring, the ball carrier explodes, resulting in their death, except on the very rare occasion. Griff's pain is Sarge's enjoyment and why it's his favorite game. Since Red vs. Blue caught its popularity during Halo 1, it's no surprise that in Halo 2, they got a little nod. Specifically in the map Beaver Creek, a remake of the original's Battle Creek where Sarge and Caboose tried to tame the idiocy of the Sim Troopers. Near the sniper spawn are movable rocks, and when you push them out of your way, there is text on the wall which says, Why am I here? A reference to Episode 1 and the frequent philosophical questioning as to why the characters are there. You ever wonder why we're here? In April of 2005, Halo 2 released the Kiltacular pack, which included two new maps, Sanctuary and Turf. In the map Turf, there are two vending machines, which each respectively hold an image of a rooster and the other of teeth. While not directly a Red vs. Blue reference, it is a nod to the company that makes the show. Another Halo 2 reference, and I'm putting a strong asterisk next to this one because I could not confirm nor deny its existence. But apparently there is a rare voice line spoken by the Marines in the mission Outskirts, where, when under fire, will yell, I'll pull your skull right out of your head and beat you to death with it. Tex walked up to him, pulled Jimmy's skull right out of his head and beat him to death with it. I couldn't find any clips of this existing online, and trying it myself, I wouldn't know where to begin. Perhaps it's a rumor, but then again, keep your ears open just in case you hear this rare voice line. You know, it's all thanks to one single question that Red vs. Blue exists. You ever wonder why we're here? No, not that one. No, but why Warthog? I mean, it doesn't really look like a pig. Say that again. I think it looks more like a puma. That's right. This is the question that is considered the spark that really set Red vs. Blue's fire ablaze. It was a real-life conversation between everyone, and one subsequently put into the show. If the vehicle looks like a big cat, why call it a warthog? Look. See these two tow hooks? They look like tough. It seems regardless, the popularity of calling it a puma amongst fans led the developers to acknowledge it in Halo 3 by adding text to the tires with the word puma engraved on it. The tradition was even carried on in Halo Reach as they kept the text on each of the warthog tires. By the time Halo Reach came out, the franchise had been alive and thriving for over nine years, and over that time, there came to be quite a few people Bungie wanted to thank and show their appreciation for. 
But instead of planting them hidden throughout all of the campaigns here and there, they decided to gather them all up and collectively show their love in one convenient location. This is known as Halsey's Tribute Room. The whole thing is comedically written as though everything came from Halsey's perspective, and she chose to document each entry herself. In the case of Red vs. Blue, her entry reads, quote, This one and his cohorts have piqued my curiosity with their incessant puppeteering. While we busy ourselves bending all of this technology in service of the war, they twist and contort the public message of our effort into something else. I'll admit, like the massive menagerie of men and women that now hang on their every word, I've laughed at their antics on more than one occasion. I find their incessant mockery and immaturity strangely cathartic, even if I cannot help but question whether or not this protracted war has wrecked irreversible harm and havoc upon these poor souls' sanity." Makes you think about what she would have thought of the director, since he too was focused in service of the war. There's also a pretty funny typo with the names of everyone. Each person has their last name written followed by their first initial. Burns B for Bernie Burns, Ramsey G for Jeff Ramsey. But Gus's name was written out as Gustavo S, meaning they thought his name was Sorola Gustavo. Perhaps it was just a typo, but it's pretty funny. In fact, speaking of Halo Reach, the game is just full of casual references, as many of the Marines in the game are named after someone. Some of the Marines can be named after the people behind Red vs. Blue as well. Possibly the most well-known Red vs. Blue Easter egg comes from Halo 3. In the mission Crow's Nest, you can deviate away from the main path towards the beginning of the mission and come across a soldier struggling to open a door with a password. Depending on the difficulty you're playing on, it will in turn change the group of characters who are talking. On easy and normal, you will get Tucker and Doc. Hey, open up! Password, please! You gotta be kidding me, what password? The password so we don't open the door for brutes! Do I sound like a brute to you? Well, you could be held prisoner by brutes. If I was held prisoner by brutes and knew the password, then the brutes could just force me to tell you the password and you'd open the door for them. Okay, well now I'm definitely not gonna open the door. But we need ammo! Well, why don't you go ask your brute buddies then? There's even a bit of dialogue during it that's reminiscent of Doc's own during the actual show. Then the brutes could just force me to tell you the password and you'd open the door for them. Okay, well now I'm definitely not gonna open the door. I'm just gonna go in there, step on its neck, and shoot it in the head. Because that's how I roll. Well, now you're definitely not coming in. On Heroic, you'll get Simmons and Griff. Hey, open up! Password. What? Need the password. You gotta be kidding me, what password? Password. They gave it out at the staff meeting 15 minutes ago. Meeting? What meeting? I was out here. Not supposed to let anyone in without it. If the staff meeting just ended, no one outside is gonna know the freaking password. Now open up! We need ammo and the chief is out here. Does he know the password? He wasn't at the meeting either! And on Legendary, you'll get none other than Church and Caboose. Hey! Open up! What's the password? Password? Oh man, I forgot. Forgot what? I forgot the password. See, that was almost right. Uh, see, the password begins with I forgot, but ends differently. Uh, try again. No, I mean, I forgot the password. Uh, okay, see, you, you got it wrong again. See, you said the same thing as last time. I'm being serious. I don't know the password. No, no, no. See, you changed the first part. See, that, that part was the right part. See, now you got the whole thing wrong. No, I forgot what the password is, and I just need you to open the door. All right, come on, man. Now you're just guessing. Halo 4 took on a completely new approach in its red vs. blue easter eggs as it, for the first time surprisingly, involved the characters themselves. It used their names, their voices, their personality, and implemented them into the game, specifically in the Spartan Ops game mode. Up until this point, if it'd been the voices, they'd only reminisce and sound like their characters like in Halo 3, so it's quite surprising that they used the characters. Spartan Ops consists of 10 chapters, each chapter with 10 missions. There's one easter egg per chapter, making a total of 10 easter eggs with the characters doing what they do best, both helping and harming others' mission to varying degrees of success. In each of their respective missions, there is a box that you must find and shoot to activate the easter egg so you can hear their dialogue. In Episode 1, Chapter 5 Core, it seems Caboose takes the courtesy of filling in for the radio guy who's gone to the bathroom by communicating with Commander Palmer himself. 
Commander Palmer to Fire Team Castle. You're on Spartans. Dalton's got targets for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, the regular radio guy is here right now. Uh, sorry. Fire Team Castle, this is Commander Palmer. I need an ETA on clear skies. Uh, yeah, as you say, the regular radio guy said he would be uh, right back. Yeah, he's in the bathroom. In Episode 2, Chapter 5, it seems the Reds and Blues have teamed up on a mission as Church, Caboose, Griff, and Simmons are all together exploring this giant alien monolith together. Let's see what it recorded from the experiments here. What does this button do? Caboose, don't touch anything! But I'm great at buttons. Uh, look at that explosion! Well, that's no good. Oh great! You're broken! Yeah, no, the fire broke. Oh, see? Great, now I'm on fire too now. Awesome. What the hell happened down there? Let's see what it's got. Hey Simmons, what do you think this machine does? How would I know? It's a 40-foot seamless monolith with one massive holographic button. It could be anything from a giant microwave oven to a weapon with enough power. Fire, fire, fire. Hey, is that Caboose? Probably. He's on fire. Oh god! It's like the armor! It does nothing! In Episode 3, Chapter 4, Shootout in Valhalla, the Reds are actually allies of the Spartans and aid in dropping off some much-needed firepower. Crimson, here's some new toys. Enjoy. Hold tight, ground forces. We are inbound with reinforcements. Don't want to say exactly what, but you'll like them. It's giant robots. What? Griff, you ruined the surprise. You have no fear for the dramatic. They're in battle, idiot. How dramatic do you want it to get? In Episode 4, Chapter 2, Rally Point, everybody's favorite party dude Vic made friends with Commander Palmer while out partying, and he's trying to bring her back since it seemed like he had a good time with her. Hello, hello, Commander Palmer, hello. Do you read me? What are you even doing? Oh, come on, dude. I thought you saved my number at the party last night. You were really killing it at the karaoke, if you know what I'm saying, dude. Miller, status... Working on it, Commander. Yeesh, easy there, Commander Buzzkill. I'm going to Hades night tomorrow, so hey, give me a buzz after you save the universe and all that. Hasta luego. Luego, bye-bye. In Episode 5, Chapter 5, Spartan Thorn, yet again Red Team is arriving to help deliver some much-needed artillery to the Spartans. But delivery goes wrong on their end as they accidentally drop off their griff ball equipment, which are still gravity hammers. Suppose you could assemble some sort of primitive gun-like vehicle out of the parts, but who knows what the insurance rate will be on that bad boy? Damn it, Griff! You dropped your cargo! Now how are we supposed to play ball? I think the bigger question here might be why a military vehicle was sent into battle with sports equipment. Funnily enough, the drops are labeled as sports equipment. In Episode 6, Chapter 4, Search and Destroy, Sarge and Griff decide to have a little fun and play a prank on Palmer. Tell me that's not what I think it is. A stockpile of stolen UNSC nukes? Miller, send down a disposal team. No need. Those nukes have all had their warheads stripped. The Coveys took them somewhere else. This is Corporal Switchback to Infinity. Go ahead, Switchback. Hey, Infinity! Is your slip space drive running? Because you better go catch it! Crimson, you're the closest responder. Fall out and help switch back. Baba booey! Baba booey! In Episode 7, Chapter 3, Engine of Destruction, Simmons is on board the aircraft which took damage and is trying his best to fix it. down here and the engines all shot up. I need maintenance ASAP. Keep it together, Marine. Spartans are on their way. Oh, great! More people with guns. I'm sure that'll fix the engine. Makes you question why Lopez isn't around to help repair all these broken machines. In Episode 8, Chapter 2, Majestic Rescue, Caboose is the one this time dropping off and delivering some much-needed supplies. I'm having Dalton drop some extra gear for you now. Six crates of elbow grease and headlight fluid inbound now. In Episode 9, Chapter 5, The Hammer, Church has an unfortunate encounter with an alien. Though, as we all know, he doesn't speak Blarg Honk. 
Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what you just said. Dude, listen to me. I do not speak alien. Oh, this is such BS. Unfortunately, Andy the Bomb wasn't there to translate, but on the upside, Church is already a ghost. I'm already dead, bitch! I guess the joke's on you! And finally, in episode 10, chapter 3, sees the power, have you ever wondered, what happened to Georgia? You don't want to end up like Georgia. Wait, what happened to Georgia? Nobody knows! They never found him! Going all the way over there? After what happened to Georgia? Would someone please tell me what happened to Georgia? Dude, you do not want to know. Well, perhaps a mission gone south in collaboration with Miller. Crimson, I can't say I think it's sane, but it's the only move we've got. Get on board the Lich by any means necessary. Cool, jetpacks! That will help us get on that ship, or my name is an Agent Georgia. And finally, while no red versus blue easter eggs seem to have made their way into Halo 5, the newest addition into the franchise Halo Infinite seems to confirm that Donut was right all along, as pink was labeled as lightish red. But for now, that does it for the red versus blue easter eggs found within Halo. A surprisingly short list, but then again, that's coming from a fan. They've made at least one in most of the games, so that's pretty good. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and subscribe for more red versus blue content. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.